Well, if you haven't seen part one, don't know where you've been, don't know what you've been doing, I'll put a link now. Go and watch that bit before you watch this because you'll spoil the fun otherwise. Then come back and we'll carry on with part two. While you're there, grab a cup of tea. With the cutting stage now complete with our H9, it is on to Maguire's M205 to refine the paint and bring it back to its true luster, clarity and glory. Obviously, I would be using a Rupes yellow foam pad on my Roots Bigfoot machine. Um, M205 yellow pad, you can conquer the world with this. You can pretty much finish most, most paint types unless you're talking extremely soft for Nikki paints. I might be looking to water it down or go to something like Sonax Perfect Finishing. But for me, this will do 90% of the finishing work that I do day to day. Absolutely lovely. Anyone can use it. Anyone can enjoy it. Take your time and just enjoy the finishing process. You've done all of the hard work in the cutting stage, actually. The finishing makes it look beautiful and it's the easier bit. Um, that's why I love this.
Now what I do find interesting is that you don't always see while you're finishing the paintwork. So on the driver's side front quarter lift Jaguar, the paint was very soft and marred quite heavily during the cutting stage. What you'd expect. It doesn't always cut perfectly whereby finishing doesn't really mean much. So what I did was took a little bit of 3M blue tape, I've run a line down the middle of the panel. Now what this is going to do is give you a before and after of why we do the finishing stage. You will always see online before and after of the cutting stage or before and after of the finished product. Well actually there's work that goes on in between that. So a little bit of tape will help you understand the clarity difference on the fluorescent tri tubes, not a lot. Bring in an LED light and we can see that the marring on the right hand side of the screen was quite heavy whereas the clarity of the finished paintwork was absolutely beautiful. With that said and done, it's like kid at Christmas. You've got to unwrap the car, haven't you? Take off every square inch of masking tape that you painstakingly put on and tucked into corners before Polished Angel Master Sealant. This stuff is beautiful. Properly beautiful. Never used it before. Ultimate Finish are the only guys I could buy it from and having working with them, obviously I went there and bought some. It's like spreading butter. There's no other way to put it. It's silky smooth, so creamy, spreads beautifully and adds such a warm glow that you don't normally see out of a paint sealant. Paint sealants can be quite cold. I didn't want that working on a straight gloss vintage red car. I needed something nice and warm. Master sealant did it and has changed my opinion on paint sealant wasn't a big paint sealant person prior to this product but oh my god if you want something a little bit different to waxing and you're not into your ceramic coatings go and pick a bottle of this up links in the description i'll bang that down there also with a discount code so you can save a little bit of money on that bottle that you're going to buy and it, it will just change the game i did two coats on this jag and just left it at that the paintwork was dripping wet, really deep, and as smooth as silk. What more do you need? Now with the paint now corrected, polished, beautified, protected and all of the other things that I did to it, it was onto some of them smaller details. So some auto finesse mercury, a rather tarnished wing mirror, wasn't in bad shape but wasn't the best it could be and a little bit of elbow grease and all of these little chrome trims around these vintage cars soon come back to life. Now it's these details that I enjoy so much more than just paint correction. Everyone sees paint correction as detailing, it's not, it's polishing paint. It's actually taking the time to work out 
what then enhances that paint. Your paint correction is the bulk of your work, but you can better that and make that paint look so much more vibrant if everything else around it is perfect. Hence why we dress tyres properly, hence why we clean glass properly. Now on the vintage cars, we have chrome work. We have to address that properly. What if an S Mercury, a microfiber cloth and a little bit of elbow grease. Stick a podcast on, stick some music on, whatever you're into, and just enjoy this bit of the detail. Because this is when detailing becomes detailing for me. Now, another one of the little details on this Jaguar for me was the rear lights. Someone had murdered these with a bottle of Autoglim Super Resin polish at some point, I swear, because they were super, super white. Unscrewed them, four screws, not particularly hard. Gave them a clean with some APC inside and out, so the lens is clean on the inside, so actually you're going to improve the, the actual usability of the light when it's back on the car. Next, I took my three inch polishing machine, I've used a Rupes wall pad and some M101, slightly deviated from the H9 because it gave me better results than these lights. Basically, what I've done is I've used a cutting compound, I've cut the lights, I've taken the swells and the scratches back out of the lights. Obviously, what does that do? It induces marring like we saw on the paintwork. I've then used a bit of 205, you can see the yellow pad lined up on the bottle already bit of 205 and refined them the finished result again is just one of those little details that add up and add up and add up I thought they looked absolutely delicious when I bolted them back on the car Told you so, didn't I? Proper naughty they are. The same was done as the tail lights with the number plate light. The lens was cleansed, polished, and the chrome surround was also polished as well. A little tarnished, but a big improvement on the clarity and the shine to the end product. All the little details that add up. And once the chrome was done, once the lights were addressed, it was time to tackle the engine bay. Difficult one this. It's not the best engine bay I've seen in any type, but it certainly isn't the worst. So I just took some wire wool, extra fine 40 grade, mercury metal polish again, a bit of my go-to at the moment. Um, and just again a bit of time and just go around and work out all them areas that are meant to be highly polished and bring them back up to that 
you're not going to set the world alight because actually you could spend two weeks on an engine bay alone but all of those little details that'll actually just make the engine bay a bit brighter a little bit more vibrant and then once i had done that i took a little bit of hand polish and polished the underside of the bonnet the underside of the bonnet on this proper motor no sound insulation none of that pure paint so i took some hand polish microfiber applicator and just went at it i used hand polish because i didn't want to have to go through the stage of dragging leads around everywhere it's not a show car it's not going to be inspected under the bonnet it's actually de designed to be a daily driver for the owner um so i wasn't going to go absolutely crazy but the hand polish brought some clarity some reflection some sharpness back to that and because it's a hand polish and all in one had a little bit of protection in there as well so when the car gets washed and the water leaks into the engine bay it will rinse off a lot freer sort of stopping any sort of potential water markings that might happen in the future again just another little thing that adds up and adds up I absolutely love wire wheels. These things are a challenge, trust me. Not only to get off the car with their knockoff spinners and all of this and that. The enjoyment I get out of cleaning wire wheels is on another level. Um, bit of an insight time-wise for you on this. If I'm doing a classic car and it's got wire wheels, I will set aside roughly an hour of wheel to be able to polish it correctly finish it protect it clean dress the tire and get it back on the car so you're looking the best part of four four and a bit hours just to be able to polish the wheels once they're off the car obviously you've got the mounting the unmounting um and then if you want to clean the wheel arches as well so close to a day was spent steam cleaning the wheel arches polishing the wheels properly dressing the tires going through cleaning any suspension components that i could get to dressing it waxing it putting some sort of sealant in there so it was easy to clean again it's not the thing that you always get to do on a detail fortunately with a client like this i'm really blessed um so like i said i took the time steam cleaned the wheel arches got in there with some apc once i'd apc them what else did i do i went in with a bit of tar and glue remover moved any tar spots once that was done they were protected it's you don't always get to do this pleasurable part, um, but really enjoyed it on this one. Again, another finishing touch that actually I enjoy so much more than just the paint correction people. Um, before I get a comment about it because I know you'll like the finish of this um, the tie dressing of choice was Sienna Gloss Gummy um, a real satin sheen to these tyres 
which is perfect for that vintage look um, and by god look at them wire wheels they are shining With that, the exterior of the car was done. Just a little bit of work on the inside, please. Now, the inside of the car wasn't too bad, as you would expect. It's not like a Ford C Max, whereby you've got sticky wrappers and chocolate spill everywhere. It's quite a respectable car, this one. Um, a good for a Hoover. I like to Hoover with a crevice tool and then I use the Valo Pro. I can't I think that's the one inch of interior brush that I use. Um, what that does is it gets into all them little cracks of leathers and that that you don't really want to stick a hoover because you might run the risk of scratching it, things like that. Um, so that pulls all the dust out and then the crevice tool sort of scoops it up. Once that was done it was a bit of an interesting one on this car. The seats had obviously been recovered at a later date compared to the door cards. The door cards were quite faded, quite worn. They needed a bit more sort of the revival as opposed to the cleaning. Um, what everything received was steam to open any pores of any surfaces that sort of allow anything to breathe. It was then agitated with an interior shampoo. Again, links in the description. Go and check that out. Check out the code. Get yourself on it. Once it was shampooed, it was all protected. It was all nourished. It's just one of them enjoyable ones, you know. Um, it's not a big interior. I quite enjoy doing things this size. Um, but the results sort of speak to themselves. The interior then matched the exterior work that we had done on the car and it was starting to look like a complete package once the interior was done. Now, like I say, you can see here, actually, I'll do a little bit of a 50-50 for you. You can see that how sort of faded and gone the vinyl and the door cars was. Now, I've used Auto Finesse Dress Oil for this. That's a water-based dressing that can be used on the inside and the outside of your car. It added depth and sort of that deep, dark luster that you wanted from the vinyl, but wasn't greasy and oily. Um, worked it in, buffed it off jobs are good and the vinyl's restored now we can't forget the other little bits of the interior it's not all carpet and leather on these cars there's going to be a bit of metal work there was enough on the outside there needed to be some on the inside again mercury and a microfiber cloth and i restored the center of the steering wheel quite easily With that said and done, 
this detail has come to the end. Extensive wash process, extensive polishing, extensive detailing to the exterior of the vehicle, the underside, the wheels, the engine compartment and the interior. And I think the results speak for themselves. Enjoy these beauty shots and I really appreciate you watching. Again, thanks to the guys at Ultimate Finish for supporting the channel at the moment. Code Joe10, banged on about it enough, go and get on it. Go and buy yourself some of that Polish Angel Master Sealant because it's the nuts. As always, thanks for watching. Please share this video, like it, subscribe to it, whack a comment down in it if you've enjoyed it. And I will see you on the next one. Cheers.